Hi, my name is Vivek. I run product management at Azimuth. Off late, there's been a lot of talk about HetNet small cells, which is why we wanted to take a couple of minutes to talk about HetNet and some of the HetNet interference mitigation algorithm. One of the biggest changes going from LT to LT advance is this concept of network densification. Network densification is all about bringing the user as close to the network as possible. And as the name suggests, you do that by making the network very dense, and this is done through HetNet. When people talk of HetNet, there are two variants, or they're used in two different contexts. One is HetNet in the sense, uh, the HetNet that we'll talk about, and then the second thing is heterogeneous networks. HetNet, in this context, is essentially a network made up of cells of the same technology, but of different sizes. Heterogeneous networks, on the other hand, is a combination of different technologies, like LTE, Wi-Fi, legacy technology. There are many advantages to HetNet slash network densification. One, you bring the user closer to the network, so obviously it makes it easier for us to get higher data rates. The second thing is it helps us with load balancing. So if I'm a user and I'm sitting close to a small cell, I jump on the small cell instead of talking to a macro cell who's far away. One of the consequences of HetNet is you go from a network that looks like this, so this beautiful structure that you always see in any book for that matter, this beautiful hexagonal uh, network uh, structure to something that looks totally different. So you go from something that is very clean uh, in architecture to something that's a little bit more ad hoc. One of the fundamental consequences of HetNet is the fact that you're operating in an interference-dominated environment. So think of this example. You're at home, you're in an apartment complex, and your neighbor has a small cell. But the small cell is close subscriber group, which means you can't get on the small cell. And you have to talk to a macro cell that's far away. So in this scenario, you're talking to a macro cell that's far away, the signal is weak, and you have a strong interferer close by. So one of the fundamental changes or things that we have to work with in LT advanced headnet is the fact that you're operating in an interference dominated environment. And a lot of work has gone in to figuring out how to mitigate and manage this interference and that's what we'll talk about today. We'll talk about three interference mitigation schemes, ICIC, EICIC and FEICIC. Let's start with ICIC. ICIC stands for Intercell Interference Coordination. This was released in release 8. Here the concept is very simple. I have two cells, and then I have users who are sitting in the periphery. The two cells talk to each other to figure out the best way to allocate resources to these users, especially those in the cell edges, to make sure that the interference, the cell, the device sees from the other cell is minimized. This is done by both cells taking measurements in terms of the interference they see, or the, the interference the devices see from the other cell, and exchanging this information over X2 to figure out the best resource allocation, to, to figure out the best resource allocation. While ICIC is good, it doesn't help us mitigate interference completely. This is why we came up with EICIC. You take ICIC and you enhance ICIC. When you take EICIC, EICIC typically does interference uh, mitigation over two domains. You can time domain, and this is done through something called ABS that we'll look at. And then the second thing is the frequency domain. Sorry, my handwriting is not very good. Frequency domain is done through cross-carrier scheduling. So let's look at ABS first. Okay, let's look at ABS. Before we look at ABS, one thing that we need to talk about is this concept called cell range extension, CRE. The concept is very simple. I have a device here who's in the presence of a macro cell and a small cell, and the device falls outside the coverage of my small cell. So instead of having this device hang up the macro cell, I use an artificial offset to tell the device, I want you to stick to the small cell. So essentially, Cell range extension is the concept of you extending the range of this small cell so that the device sticks to the small cell. That's good. So now you've taken a device, would have gone to the macro cell, thereby eating up, causing load there, and you moved it to the small cell. One of the, concept, one of the fundamental challenges with this is the fact that you have a device who's sitting in this region, the cell range extension region, where the signer 
from the macro cell is probably better than the synapse from the small cell. So how do you ensure that this device who's being forced to stick to the small cell gets good user experience? That is done through this concept called ABS, almost blank subframes. So as the name suggests, what you do is the macro cell, so this is the macro and this is the small cell. So for our discussion here, let's assume this is UE1, then I have other UEs. You have UE2, UE3 in the macro coverage, UE4, UE5 in the coverage of the small cell. So what the macro cell does is instead of transmitting on all subframes, it takes the subframes and it tells subframe 1, I'm going to transmit UE2, I'm going to schedule UE3. This subframe, I'm going to go almost blank. And then it schedules UE2, UE3. Now in my small cell tells, okay, UE4 and UE5 are in good coverage, so I'm going to service them at this point of time. Oh, and when I get a window of opportunity from the macro cell in the form of this blank subframe, I'm going to service UE1. So essentially it's a very beautiful concept. Think of it as time multiplexing where the macro cell goes blank for some subframes and the small cell uses those windows as a window of opportunity to transmit to the device. This is done by, uh, this is done by the macro cell sharing its ABS pattern with the small cell. This is done over the X2 interface. So the macro cell basically tells the small cell up front that this is the subframe structure or this is when I'm going to go blank so that the small cell knows when to transmit to devices sitting in the cell range extension region. This is very good because now you have an opportunity not just to keep the device on the small cell but also ensure that this device gets good reception. One of the fundamental challenges with, not challenges, one of the fundamental trade-offs we are making here is the fact that these subframes where the macro is going blank, you're giving up on resources. So the macro is essentially sacrificing some of its resources so that the small cell has the opportunity to, turn, to serve its devices in the cell range region. This is really the reason why when you look at HetNet, you need to look at system capacity. You can no longer look at link level capacity because you are making trade-offs here. And when you look at overall performance, your performance needs to capture the fact that while you may be giving up some capacity for the macro cell, you make up for capacity at the small cell and ideally at a system level it leads to better performance. So we spoke about ABS, which is a time domain interference mitigation scheme. Cross carrier scheduling is a frequency domain mitigation scheme. This is typically used in conjunction with carrier aggregation. Carrier aggregation, as you know, is essentially a mechanism that gives us a way to provide a factor pipe to the device. This is done by aggregating two or more carriers. With carrier aggregation, you have a T-cell, the primary cell, which carries both the control as well as the data, and one or more secondary cells, which carry just the data part of it. With cross-carrier scheduling, what you do is you tell, if I have this kind of a scenario, I have a macro cell and a small cell, both of them would use the P-cell and S-cell on different frequencies, thereby helping you mitigate the interference you see from the control and the data channels. So far we saw what ICIC was, what EICIC was. So let's talk about FEICIC. EICIC enhances performance better than ICIC, but one of the fundamental things with EICIC is you're still mitigating the interference you see only from your data channel, not from your control channel. You still see interference from your control channels and your cell, uh, cell reference signal. The other thing that we also saw with PICIC was how you make a trade-off uh, in terms of your capacity because especially when you use ABS, your macro cell is giving up on some capacity. This addresses, FEIC addresses some of those challenges. It does it through two things. One is something called as RPABS, reduce power ABS. If you remember, ABS is where the macro cell goes blank so that the small cell is able to transmit to the device. With reduced power ABS, instead of the macro cell going totally blank, the, reduce, the macro cell reduces its power so that it's not giving up on this capacity entirely. Second thing that you do is in order to reduce the interference that you see from 
your um, control channels, they, you use advanced rate matching and coding mechanisms on the network side and interference cancellation receivers on the device side, so you're able to mitigate the interference from the control channels. So in this video, we saw a very quick overview of HetNet and some of the HetNet interference mitigation algorithms. If you need more details, please check out our website www.asmutsystems.com and we have a white paper that talks about these concepts in detail. Thank you.